Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be talking about a subject from bio, which is classification. Yay! But a quick heads up for my bad handwriting. I'm sorry about it. So let's get to it. So some key facts we're going to be learning about are the three domains, six kingdoms, and some bunch of other stuff that goes along with it. So work with me here. And overall, we're going to be answering the big question, which is how does evolution play a role in classification? Like, well, you know what I mean? So you're probably wondering, well, it's a big world out there. And there's a lot of people. So how? How am I supposed to know all this stuff? And then, you know, you'll start crying so much. But, you know, just dry those tears because I'm going to make it easy for you and break it down. So let's travel back in time to the 1800s where cell phones were not even invented. So there you have it, the history of classification. And there were two major people in this discovery, which the first one is Charles Darwin. And he was an English naturalist geologist. And what he thought of was the evolutionary theory. And what he did was travel along seas, looking at little tiny species and researching on them. And he thought that life had a history of change. And you know what? He was right. Then there was the discovery of the geologic time scale, which had the four distinct ages. That was the toughest sentence I ever said, guys. And it started with Precambrian, which was the earliest traces of life. And it all started with a big bang bang! With jellyfish and bacteria and stuff like that, yeah! Next came Paleozoic, which was 543 through 245 million years ago. Then came Mesozoic, where you, with the popular Jurassic Times. You know, with the dinosaurs, ah, my favorite movie. Uh, yeah. Then came Cenozoic, which is more the recent times. Well, including Ice Age and the primates and uh, us mammals, you know, we, yeah, we're mammals. But then there was this whole continental drift that happened, which means that our continent broke up into what it is today, which is North America, South America, Asia, Ash Africa, Australia, you know, the things you learn in history, that's what. So evolution is traits that have changed over generations so you your mother your grandmother your great-grandmother and so on and so forth generations one example was the salamander so they used to have regular feet that they would use to climb on trees but since their environment had changed and there was a lot more water they learned to adapt and so you, you would start seeing their feet have webbing so they can swim in the water and just enjoy life like how it is so because of that their classification had to be changed they used to be reptiles with lizards and stuff like that that had regular feet but then were moved to amphibians be because of their webbing feet just like frogs you know how nice Evolution, again, is traits changed over generations, and if classification is naming species by its characteristics, well, it kind of works out because traits, characteristics, well, you get my drift. But whoa, stop right there. I mean, we haven't even gotten to the three domains, so let's start there, okay? Domains is the highest you can get with classification and they are eukaryotes bacteria which you can't see and archaea eukaryotes they have a nucleus bacteria has a cell wall but no nucleus archaea they have a cell wall but it's different <laughs> but no nucleus example of a eukaryote from Hawaii, you all know and probably don't like it, are mongooses. Fun fact about them, they were brought over here to get rid of the rat population, but scientists later found out that rats are nocturnal and mongooses are not. So that was a big mistake taking them over here. Uh, not good one. A famous example of bacteria in the U.S. is Salmon 
salm salmonella i think that's how you pronounce it <laughs> you can get that from reptiles so wash your hands example of archaea in hawaii are the hydrothermal vents in the ocean they can hold stuff like Begia toa, which can be 10 to 20,000 years old, older than my grandma. Now both of these are prokaryotes, and prokaryotes are also known as single-celled organisms. Now single-celled organisms are also called unicellular, unlike eukaryotes, which are multicellular. So this guy, also known as Carl Leon, also played a part in classification. He made up this thing called ALD taxonomy, which is the identification naming of classification. Like you naming your pets a specific name, each thing has a more scientific name. Binomial nomenclature breaks things into three, giving it its more scientific name, like Homo sapien. That's us. So here's the breakdown. There are the three domains, the six kingdoms, the class, I scratch that, the thylums, the classes, the orders, the families, and the genus, and the species. Now the six kingdoms! You got your animals, you got your plants, you got your fungi, and your protists, and your bacteria, and your Archaeas! Yay! Yay! Facts! Bacteria can make their own food, some can move, and they can also clean up oil spills. Archaeas can't make their own food, some can move and love salt and heat. Facts about animals is that they cannot make their own food, can move, and reproduce asexually and sexually. Plants make their own food, but cannot move and reproduce asexually and sexually. Facts about protists. Some make their own food, some can move and reproduce only sexually. Examples like algae. Don't forget fungi. So plants, also known as autotrophs, give off oxygen for us animals, and we give off carbon dioxide and water. So plants kind of have our backs. Thanks! An example of an animal in Hawaii would be the Hawaiian state fish, which is called the Huma Huma Nuku Nuku Apua. That I learned in elementary school how to say, and it's one of the longest words in Hawaiian language, but you can also call it the reef trigger fish. And the plants of Hawaii is the Hawaiian hibiscus, the state flower, which I found out only lasts for a day. Like wow. The fungi of Hawaii would be the wavy cap, and they live on wood chips, which is really weird. And the protist of Hawaii is the green algae, where you can find deep in the ocean. The dichotomous classification key makes things much more easier if you want to find the, the species name by using its characteristics. And what we're going to do here is take a look at the snake and follow it down. Here's my picture of a king cobra. Ooh, ah, really good, yeah? So the snake, or the king cobra in this case, is from the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, the class Reptilia, the order Quadata, the family Elapidae, the genus Ophiophagus, the species Ophiophagus hana. So that was a lot to take in and a lot of big words for me to say, but what you should know overall is that you should know which is what and what it does. You need to identify things, you need to know what objects fall under, you need to know what it's living and what's not. You also need to know for the future and you need to know to tell what the difference is between things. But they're all right, so don't worry. And you'll you'll get used to all this this stuff. I'll oh, trust me. I hope I did. But thank you so much for watching this. This is crazy. But thank you. Um. Bye. I just want to show you how ghetto this setup is. Am I right? So weird. A skateboard, two speakers, my jewelry box, and a deck of cards. All my information.
especially that this whiteboard out